Texting, texting, texting. Welcome back. Segment two here on a tip them back Tuesday. Welcome to the mid sack. By the way, it's a perfect, we say it's a perfect, <coughs> perfect. It's nice and cool, not too, it's it's right there. It's comfortable. Yeah, it's what, like what is nice this? It's What's a, the a, I don't know, but it's it's nice. Oh, it's 64. 64, no wind. Nice little, it's perfect. The perfect late summer night oh, here in the sack. You can see the moon peeking the moon, out. Right there, the moon's right there, clear sky. Beautiful the night. Bugs aren't really rampant. Yeah, beautiful night for a sports rant talk show. It's a perfect night. So anyway, perfect night two. to sit outside in case you need to rant yeah. because it just kind of. Yeah, and have a few, have a few, right. right. This a few how's your problem? Yeah. 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 yeah, where's yeah. your mother? Yeah, where's your mother? How's your brother? Hey. <laughs> By the way, for those of you not know, shameless plug. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, we go big here, boys and girls. We go big. Okay. It's just that simple. Yeah, y'all so, y'all didn't realize that Kettle One was sponsoring the show. Yeah, they are, they are now. That's what they are. <laughs> they are now. Um, they are. You know, we'll be yeah. racking up the dough yeah, as those right. checks That's coming. right. Just, just, blank, just blank check. Just whatever it's it is. It's all about advertising. It's all about you advertising. Know? So anyway, segment two, we're going to turn to the NFL. Oh, baby. You know, look, I, <laughs> I hate to... No, I actually, well, yeah, I don't hate I love it. I love it when I get to say I'm right because <laughs> it's so rare that when you get to actually do it, it's beautiful. And I know what he's going to say. Well, ah, preseason grain of salt. His nickname is Tom Grain of Salt. Is all right I'm now. not going to say that. Uh, but, but here's the thing. You're dead wrong. I, oh, I'm not, I wasn't wrong about this. Baby. What are you right about? Oh, I'm right about Mr. Aaron Rodgers. What he said? Mr. Mr. I can't take one cent less. If that means I lose the best receiver in football, so be it, because I'm Aaron Rodgers, and I can turn water into wine. Okay? Well. So let's hear these wise it's, words. It's so, it's so interesting, Aaron, that that was the impression you gave. Because today, apparently, the gong went off in Mr. Rogers' head. Okay? Mr. So, Rogers. So I don't know how many of you saw this on ESPN, NFL Network, whatever your poison is for preseason football, getting ready, you know, gearing up for your fantasy drafts and all that. But Mr. Perfect, I saw your posts on Facebook. Yeah, That's Mr. All I saw. Mr. Perfect, Mr. I, you know, I, I know, I know, everyone knows that I'm not as good as Tom <laughs> Brady, but I still think I am. Damn it! <laughs> and uh, so, you know, and you know, Aaron could can turn chicken chicken shit into chicken salad. That's how he thinks of himself. Okay, and look, I'm all for confidence. Confidence is part of what makes these guys great. But there's confidence and there's delusion. Okay, so. Mm. <laughs> Today, on August 16th, now there's still two preseason games to go. I would still say it's early, but it's never too early for Aaron, okay? So this was a direct quote. Young guys, especially young receivers, got to be way, way more consistent. <laughs> a lot how of many, drops. How many whys in the way? A lot of, lot of, well, it was a big one. A lot of drops, a lot of bad route decisions, running the wrong route. We got to get better in those areas. Uh, the frustration wasn't directed at Alan, Alan Lazard. Oh, so somebody actually avoided his rap. Oh, well, that's the guy who's the veteran. Shocking, okay? That's the guy who avoided. Uh, or was it, oh, Randall Cobb? But Randall, I don't think, played that way. So Rogers' tolerance appears to be stoked at these new guys uh, dropped by Romeo Dubs. Uh, then there were three uh, interceptions uh, made by jo or three mistakes made by Jordan Love. Uh, yeah, it's the regular season's coming up. we got to clean this up. Uh, play our best guys the season starts, whoever guys. Well, who are those guys, Aaron? Who are your best guys? Because the thing is, if you're doing your squad practices, here's where you are playing the one. Because you're not going to play them Thursday and Friday night on TV. You're going to play them now when nobody's watching. So who is out there running all the wrong routes and dropping all the passes? Okay, and getting all the penalties. Who are those guys masked as wide receivers for the Green Bay Packers. Who were those impersonators, Tom? I want to know. Are you on the case? Have they called you yet? Somebody needs to. Because let me tell you something, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Why, why do you want to know who they were? Because uh, they didn't need Devontae Adams. They didn't need him. Eh, he's just another receiver. I can make anybody look good. Really? That doesn't sound like that to me. That sounds like finger pointing. Hey, hey is that, that's his I, MO, though, right? That it, look, if they had a gold medal for this, Aaron Rodgers would be better than the Soviet hockey team. Okay, for all the finger pointing. Sometimes though, never... he cools it down and says, "Relax, we're fine." Right? That's also he his... said it in that mellow monitor. I got this all figured out. Here's the problem with the "I got this all figured out" attitude. Green Bay fans have been watching this crap for 12 years now, since the last Super Bowl they won. They haven't even been to another. One. <laughs> At what point? And Green Bay fans are knowledgeable. That is so weird. Green Bay fans are knowledgeable. They know football. At what point are they going to go, are you shitting me? Yeah. 
you're the one who said don't panic when Devontae Adams left town. And De- Devontae Adams, let's be clear on something, folks. Devontae Adams took less money than Green Bay, because Green Bay could have actually offered him more, to leave Aaron Rodgers and but go play Green with him. did Green Bay offer it to him? I, I imagine they did. He's the best receiver. He, he took there. less he money? He took less money to leave. What does that did, say? Did we, did we talk about that? We, I didn't know about it until about a week ago that actually it was less. He took less money. Wow. Okay. Which I believe my hair would have been so, on fire if I heard that. <laughs> you know, I was like, so. Okay. So then you can't, so then you can't really blame it on Aaron not sharing the money because he was offered more money than he took. And yet he still left. Why? No, no. So you can blame Aaron's As the per- personality. Yeah. Well, that's what I've always been talking about is Aaron's but, personality. But I'm talking about yeah. like. Him, you know, being greedy and having too big a contract doesn't play into it. Because they offered him more money. It did, because they couldn't go out and get another stud. They didn't have the money to. Yeah, but... but, They could offer Devontae Adams. But the biggest stud, they they offered the biggest money and he didn't take it. I don't know what they... That speaks to Aaron Rodgers. Why would you leave this guy that's so fucking... His attitude, but not his greed. You want to pick a poison here? Go right ahead. No, okay. I'm just clarifying. The bottom, the bottom line is I've never liked his attitude, okay? And his attitude leads to his greed because his attitude is I'm not taking one penny less. If Aaron, if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I haven't won a Super Bowl in 12 years and my team's won 39 games in the last three, I'm not going to turn around and blame my GM. <laughs> well, Unless I'm Aaron Rodgers. Okay? So my problem is not his – this is, again, this has got nothing – this is like Kyrie Irving. No, him and Kyrie Irving should go bowling, the, the two of them. I mean, they, 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 seriously, this is not about talent. They can get immunized together. They, they might as well. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. They, they might have a fight. Would Kyrie get immunized? No, he wouldn't. Do that. Would, he, would he do that? Sure he would. Would he? Because getting immunized means, like, taking an herbal supplement. That's, well, that was, okay. Right? Okay. Like, that's Aaron right. Rodgers was like, yeah, I got immunized. Yeah. And then it was like – Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't get. The, yeah. I didn't get the. Uh, show. Yeah, this guy has no flaws at all. Anyway, um, so the bottom line is, uh, right now, and there's still two get preseason games to go, but he's already had, had had it up to here with these guys. Well, these guys are here because of you. Okay, but what if you, he's coaching? What if he's coaching? What if he's trying to motivate the guys? Bad, bad okay. coach. Totally bad coach. You don't you you, you say ever be the right you approach? say that behind closed doors. What if he has and he feels like you he say that if you're the head coach? You don't say that when you're you the don't guy. Think a teammate should blow somebody's No, spot. I don't give no. He didn't have the res. I don't care. He doesn't have the resume. When I'm talking about team sports. The resume ain't MVPs. That's an individual award. I'm talking about the ultimate team sport. There is only one resume, ladies and gentlemen, where they listen to that kind of shit. It's called ring. Okay, and he's only got a ring. Okay, and he hasn't got one in 12 years. And everybody that was on that team says he wasn't the best player on that team. It was the Dan Packers defense. It wasn't even him at that time. So, okay, so so let me ask. You, this is interesting, and I'm glad mm-hmm. we're going down this path. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. Please, but I want to get your take on. Something. Please. Okay, so we're kind of talking about peer feedback right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so instead of you know. Who should feedback come from? When's it appropriate to come from a peer? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a coworker, a teammate. Mm-hmm. Sure. So you're saying that the way Aaron Rodgers is delivering this feedback, he should have a better resume in order to do that. I think his timing is terrible. Mm-hmm. I, and first of all, if he knew what he thought he knew, he wouldn't be doing it this way. Right. He might be. Look, it's okay to go behind closed doors where it's just you and them, mm-hmm. and do it. Sure. Okay. Because then you're not embarrassing them. Right, you're holding saying, them. You can hold them accountable without embarrassing them. Right. But you're saying okay? if you decide if you to des- cross If that you decide line, you're going to do you this, better you better have, have a better resume, resume than right. the one. And I'm not talking about his four MVPs. So, that's, so that's, 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 that can be voted on. Here's the thing about those rings. Those aren't voted on. Right. Those are won. You earned it. You earned it. Yeah. Okay. So for him to All have. Right, so let me pose a question. Go ahead. Okay. Because this is where I'm going on a tangent. Sure. Fernando Tatis. Okay. Um, you know, everybody, most people know about Fernando Tatis. He's one of Major League Baseball's premier young premier stars. Premier rising stars. He really is. He's yeah. the son of a baseball player yeah. who was pretty good, yeah. but like T- Fernando Tatis Jr., um, he's already He's better. supposed to be like one of the greatest. He's athletes. already better than his father. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he is. Yeah. His he father is. was good. And Fernando but, Tatis Sr. Yeah. was good. He was good. Um, this guy's better. But, you know, he's one of these, these rising stars. Um, 
and he got a three hundred million dollar contract like after his rookie year, which is unheard of. Okay, uh, he's twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty yeah. three, and he has three hundred plus million yeah. dollars. And he got that a year or two ago. A year or two. Now, after signing that deal, he's crashed on a motorcycle. When the media asked him about the accident. He said, which one? Okay. So he's crashed on a motorcycle multiple times. He banged up his wrist the last time. He's been out all year. And he was about to come back over the next couple of weeks. And he got popped for, for performance enhancing drugs. And now he's gone 80 games. Yeah, the rest of this season. And this is after they just went out and traded for Soto yeah, and Josh they were, they were loading up to make trade. a run. Right. And they and, can still uh, make that run. No. But they could, but it just this got is a it deflator. Just, yeah, because everybody's like, "Oh, when yeah. we get Tatis back, yeah. this is going to be insane." And then this comes out. They and had they had a they had arguably the best lineup in baseball. So they were um, arguably the best lineup in baseball. So in most of his teammates didn't defend him, and there was one guy in particular, and this is what kind of made me think of this. Mm -hmm. I think his name's Mike Clevin, the guy with all the hair, the white dude. Yes. Yeah. And he said he's got to grow up. This is the second time. You know, so there's trust issues there, okay? But who the fuck is Mike Clevenger? And I saw on, I heard Russo talking about it, Mad Dog. Mad Dog, Russo. yeah. What did, what did he about, think about it? Well, he was talking about the fact that Clevenger, during the pandemic season, was running around in clubs. Yeah, so and he a, was getting so, called out for that, So he's too. a hypocrite. So he's a fucking he's hypocrite, a hypocrite yeah. without a resume. Yeah, without a resume. Probably. You know, yeah. whereas like yeah. Manny Machado, who doesn't have a championship resume, no. but is a hell of a player. Oh, he's a great player. And has been a great player. Yeah, pretty much since, since he since, came since into the league. Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah you know, that's he didn't even go that hard. No, he didn't. But he did say, we got this far without him. No, he actually took the right approach. I think so. I think he did. I think he, he brought it up because, well, they asked him Right. About it. He didn't So he addressed it, but he didn't throw him under the bus. Right. He's, He's like, yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah, it's disappointing, you know, but, but look, we were doing we this. this far we got to keep going. Right. The, the goal doesn't change. Yeah. And honestly, that I is probably that the most, good. that was the most mature yeah. thing I've ever heard come out of me, which I was right. Rough. Okay, and actually the first time he actually made sense to me. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's growing up. Because that was the exact right thing to say. Yes, he nailed it. And I agree with you what the Curly Q dude did. Uh, what was his name again? His last name's Clevenger. Yeah. I believe he's yeah. a pitcher. I mean, did he have a right to be mad? Yes, he did. Sure. Is he the one who should be calling this guy? Exactly. Out? No, he's not. No. Exactly. No, no. And if I and, and no, but here's the thing that we don't know. Because the manager <laughs> saw all this shit. Yeah. I'm, I would like to think if this manager's a good manager, he called that dude in and said, you know what? This kid fucked up, but you got nothing to say. Exactly. You got nothing to say. Yeah. You if they ask you, say, well, hope he gets back soon and healthy, we gotta move on. That's all you fucking <laughs> right. say. You don't say another damn but thing. But, you know, it kind of He's got to grow up when you're doing this. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, it's kind of, it's one of those things where. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's accurate. I, I wonder how they prepared him, or prepared the team. Because. Well, they told them right the, before the right damn before game. Right before the game. They weren't ready for it. So I wonder if that didn't give them enough time. It didn't. To give the they had players to go, a strategy. Because they had to go out and play. They didn't have and a chance. And right to, out of the game. Yeah, they didn't have a chance to think about this. They had to go out. They told them. We're talking about bad timing. I mean, they, they literally. But they I had would, to. Because if uh, they didn't, they probably would have found out during the game. They had to. But they, I mean. They look, probably would have found out during the game. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, a they wrong. They were in a shit place. I don't know if there's a right answer. here. They had a talent. It's just that simple. All right. And but when they, it happened. It almost, the they almost should have. Okay. We're going to give you some information. Mm -hmm. Like, they should have come to him like this and said, look. We're making the decision to give this information to you now mm -hmm. because if we wait until after the game, well, you don't want them hearing from the media either. Out, yeah, you don't want them hearing that's it. That's not what we want. Yeah, you don't want that either. Okay, no, so no, we're no. so we're going to give you some big news, yeah. and it's going to be shocking. Yeah, but what we need everyone to do is take that news in, yeah. and then flip a switch because we're going to talk about strategy after the game. Yeah, and then after we talk to the media, we will have a real team meeting, yeah. and we will discuss this. Yeah. So, and here are some talking points. Mm -hmm. Fernando yeah, Tatis how Jr. Much, is tested positive. How much time they had? <laughs> yeah, they had like 20 minutes. They didn't have a lot of time. I mean, so no. I mean, look, they they, they, were, they handled it the best way they could have. Um, but so, I mean, how they, do you, so you feel the same way like Clevenger probably shouldn't have said it. No, because look at and look at Rodgers, you know, to, to his point, this dude's not an all-time great player. Rodgers is an all-time great player. 
That's true. I'm not saying Rogers should shouldn't say something. Yeah, Rogers has I'm more. I'm saying more uh, he has way more clout than this guy. But I'm saying that Rogers, there's a way to do this. And when there's still two preseason games to go, because he backtracked, and then he, re- I think he realized if you hear that whole interview. He kind of backtracks the end, going, "Look, it's preseason. We got to right. work this out." If he had just said that, he all he had to do was say that in the beginning. Yeah. Not start calling out. You no, know, it, it, it's the receivers. It's the, it's the same people. I'm like, why are you doing that? Yeah. Because to me, if I'm another receiver, it's like you know, the, fuck him. Yeah. If, if Devontae Adams didn't think he was worth it, then what the? Right. I mean, if I'm another receiver, well, fuck you. What the fuck have you done? And lose. Right. All they do is build around you, and you find ways to fucking lose. Yeah. Like, that's all you've done. Hey, you can win those individual awards. Good for you. And by the way, those are voted on. Yeah. Those are voted on. Because you have these guys in your fucking pocket because they're enamored with your talent. Okay? But then they start realizing. And Max Kellerman, the biggest idiot on the planet, has even figured this out. You know, <laughs> that Aaron Rodgers has got Tom Brady beat everywhere except between the years. Obviously. And maybe, just maybe, that is the most important thing. <laughs> but I think you, I, I, I think you bring up a great point Fuck. in that I mean, Rodgers is an all-time great. He and is, at but the same time, he hasn't won at a level no. where people look to him and go, you know what? They talk I'll listen about, to everything you say yeah, they because talk, you win all the time. They talk about That's him like he's happens. Tom Brady. And let, let's be clear on something. Let's just I'm gonna spell this out for all you Aaron Washers, Aaron Rodgers, Rogers, uh, scrubbing, scrubbing ball washers out there. Here's the reality. Aaron Rodgers could win the next three Super Bowls in a row, and he'd be half as good as Tom Brady. Think about that for a second. And no team has ever won three in a row in the history of this league. Okay? He could win the next three Super Bowls in a row, and he'd still only be halfway as Tom Brady. Let that sink in. Okay? <laughs> so, anyway. But, but, but it, it, it's beyond that. What it, it is what it beyond really that. comes down to is that he, people respect success more than talent. In team sports, so, more than anything. In everything. Yeah. So when, you know, you are a ridiculously successful person, like an abnormally successful, people will take your word and so, go, you know what? Because you got this the, person knows what they're talking yeah, about. You get the but, hardware. But if you take the most talented person who doesn't seem successful to, I mean, not to the level he should right, be. Rogers is very successful. His okay. talent is not... But as compared not, to somebody he, like Brady... His success is not to his talent. I agree. He underachieves. Agree. And here's the thing, okay? So and, people aren't just going to naturally you know, follow. You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... Are you sitting down? This is the only time you're ever going to hear me do this. I'm going to quote a Dallas Cowboy. Not just any Cowboy. Oh, dear. It was Troy Aikman. I thought you were going to say... No, it was Troy Aikman. Who said, and I quote... <laughs> and this is, a, this, is, this is for you, Aaron Rodgers... And this is the difference between you and Tom Brady, okay? Troy Aikman, they asked him a question. He, they took him out of a game in a blood. He had a chance to break some records whatever. And Troy Aikman looked in the camera and goes, look, I don't want to walk ahead of my teammates, and I don't want to walk behind them. I want to walk beside them. That's leadership 101. But that's Troy Aikman, who has two more Super Bowls than you. And he did it in an era where the defense could play defense. Aaron, <laughs> okay? Pretty boy, okay? So anyway... When you said you were going to quote a Dallas Cowboy, I thought it was going to be Jason Garrett. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't drink right there. That kind of shit. All right. So it was a joke. It was. It, yeah, it was. It's, it's insulting to Troy Aikman, but I, reg- I digress. It was anyway, a joke. So anyway, um, we're going to end this. Are we ending right there? Do you, is there anything else? I mean, there, there's there the, is something else. Well, well, there, to, all right, there's something. I mean, there is the Pittsburgh. Hey, here's the thing for you Steeler fans. Did that kid Pickett already supplant Trubisky? Thirteen for fifteen, two touchdowns really? in his first game. <laughs> okay. Now, yes, it was. They're trying to say Mason Rudolph might win. No, Get the no, fuck out! No, of here. no, no, no. The only job Mason Rudolph's going to have on that street <laughs> is sweeping it. Okay. Well, the only so, job we'll have is getting his helmet ripped off the, by Miles Garrett. That too. Okay. The bottom line is this. And by the way, Trubisky played well. He did. He didn't play bad. They both look good. I but heard this a bunch kid, of people coming out saying this, he's underrated dude, and this and that. Dude, and they, like, they both played is well. Is Mitch Trubisky really good? They both played well. He had bad coaching. You knew the Chicago Bears staff was crap, but he made two playoffs. He had a two to one touchdown with a bunch of shit. You know those guys couldn't coach. Forget the player. Are those guys, was that a good coaching staff? Yes or no? Who do they have? Did they have Adam Gase? They had, I forget who, they've all been fired. They've all been fired. Okay? They're they're already gone. 
Okay, he went through two coaching staffs in three years there. Okay, and none of them were competent. None of them. Okay, and they went to the playoffs twice. And this kid had it with bad coaching, bad coaching, and not a lot of weapons. Had a two to one touchdown interception ratio and completed sixty six percent of his passes with a bunch of crap and poor coaching. Now he's been sitting in Buffalo's system for two years. There's some coaching. And now he's going to play for Mike Tomlin, who everyone would tell you is the best coach in the NFC this side of Bill Belichick. Everyone would tell you that. Okay? He's never had a Patrick Mahomes. He did have Ben Roethlisberger. But Mahomes is as good as Roethlisberger. He's probably already better. But the bottom line is he's been to – he's won. He's never had a losing season. Never. Never finished below 500. Talk about Tomlin. Talk about Mike Tomlin. He's never finished below 500. Never. Okay? Even in years when he didn't have Ben. So this guy can coach. So now he's got a real coach, and he's still young. Okay? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But the bottom we'll line see. is there's a legit quarterback competition in Pittsburgh right now, and you need to keep an eye on it because both of these guys look good, and I think this is going to be very interesting down the stretch to see what happens. Now, but you've gotten away from peer feedback. Now, maybe those two will give each other peer feedback. They will. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they will. And they'll grow together. But there is a, uh, there is a problem. See, that kid played in Pittsburgh for Pitt University. He came into the, the game – I don't know how many people remember the movie The Replacements, but it was like when freaking what's his name Shane Falco came out of the locker room at halftime when they're down twenty one nothing to the World Champs. I never it saw was, The Replacements. You need to see it. Uh, but anyway, it was like that. It was like when Larry Bird came out of the locker room after he broke a broke a eye socket against the Pacers. The freaking place erupted. <laughs> it was a goddamn preseason game for Christ's sake. And he came out. Willis like, Reed is the first one. All right, there you go. You weren't even alive for that. I, I know, you were alive I, for the but Bird I've one. Seen video. Okay, all right. Well, there you take that one. Yeah, that one too. Any one of them. Okay. All right, but so, there was one more piece of peer feedback I wanted to talk to you about. Go right ahead. Again, with the Padres. Okay. 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 So, I a couple nights ago, the Padres were losing to the Marlins. Okay. In Florida. Mm-hmm. And Luis Rojas hits, I think it's Luis, or Miguel Rojas. He hits like a double yeah. into uh, left field. Okay. Jerks and Profar picks the ball up as Luis Rojas is getting to second. And Profar motions with his glove. Like, try to take third. Oh, he dares him. Yeah. Rojas, boom, takes third. Throw is late. He double dog dared him. He double dog dared him and he, he freaking checked him, you know? Damn. And he's and he took third. And so he missed on the And throw. they're losing to the Marlins. He missed on the throw too. Well, he, no, he, he made the throw, but it was late. He was late. He didn't have the arm to get the guy. <laughs> so they come into the dugout. Manny Machado comes over to him, and he's like, "I why did I see this? What Manny Machado this was last night. It was either last night or <laughs> over the you know over the weekend." Manny Machado comes up to him and goes, "Throw the fucking ball." <laughs> you know, I don't know what he said, but it, like when you see Machado's face, it looks like that's what he says. Like, Throw the ball, man! Like, what are you doing? And Joe Musgrave walks up to him. Who's like the ace of that staff? Yeah, and he smacks him in the chest, and he goes, "Yeah, you're in the Italian, right? Like, what, what are you wrong doing? With you? <laughs> you know." And then Juan Soto's got his arm around him, like, uh, "Now we need to hug." You know, dude, you're, like, you're an arrogant fuck and couldn't back it right. up, and now you need a hug, right? No, but like, you, need you know, fight. I I really appreciated the peer feedback in that moment from the last guy. From all of from them. Machado, yeah. from Musgrove, I, from Soto. Like, I don't know if Soto was was in the right place. <laughs> but, but I get but, why but he here, did no, it. Here's what happened. I get why he the did it. The vets on the team yeah. were like, step your fucking game up. Yeah. Soto was like, dude, it's okay. But yeah. like, come on. It's not okay. You know? Right. Okay. But Soto is the new guy and yeah. really can't come in and just be like. No, he shouldn't have done it. Let the right. vets handle it. Yeah. Let the but, guys, yeah. But I, I look, I appreciate what he was, was cool trying moment. to do. Yeah, it was a cool moment. I get what he was trying to do. But the other two guys are the ones who, were, who should have been talking and were right on. Spot but it's, on. it's it's really hard to give look. someone on on your level, right, you know, that there's not some kind of um, artificial, you know, hey, I'm your boss or you're my boss or, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody who's just on your level as a peer, mm-hmm. as a friend, as a coworker, sure. it's hard to give that person feedback because you don't have authority over them. No, but you are in a pennant race. No, you you, you, you are have fact, the right to do you, it. In fact, you, there are three games, I think there's a half a game separating yes. three of them. Like, of all, the, need to of, win of all the times to get arrogant and pull that shit, this was not it. <laughs> and, is, and they were losing. The, the timing couldn't have been much worse. Right. I mean, this is, no, but this is, the, I mean, listen. But it's cool <laughs> to see, like, young people 
taking pride in what they do and like going to a peer and being like, dude, like, come on. No, that should have happened. That's great. I love it. You need that because right now you can't be fucking around right now. You you said it yourself. Wins are at a premium. You don't. You yeah. can't take a night off. This is when this and is you're when playing the Marlins. This That's is the team you got. You got to beat that team. This is the thing. But this is when this is the fun part of the season. I said to you guys two nights ago. This is we're in the sixty. Every game counts. There are so many teams. This is what I love about the, the addition of the wild card. More teams are in it. Now there's just blood and guts all over. Every little shit like this is going to get micro fucking analyzed to that. And it should because it could be the difference between the season right. and going home. And this is what they could. If the Padres miss, they're going to look back on this moment as one of those moments. Okay? Whether you like it or not. Okay? So that's the point of this. That's part <laughs> of what makes this the sport. Any sport at this time of year fun. When you're when you're gearing up for the post and everybody's jockeying for position, you're fighting to get in, and every fucking inning counts, and every pitch matters, and you can't make one fucking wrong decision. You can't do that kind of. You shit. can't do shit like that. You can't do shit like that. Okay, that's and like you're letting your ego get in the way of a group goal, and that is the ultimate like betrayal of a teammate. Is like it happens all the time in games. In football, it happens a lot when somebody gets upset on a play. Yeah. You know, like they get pushed they by lose another their, guy. They lose their shit. And their ego kicks in and says, yeah. I can't let him push me. Yeah. And they and they get a flag. And then they get a flag and, then, and boom, yeah. you lose the game yeah. because now they're kicking yeah. a field yeah. goal. Because that's a 15-yard right. penalty. Every it's like, time. it's those yes. moments where yeah. your ego yeah. pops up and goes, hey, let's, let's be in this for ourselves. Yeah. And you have to be big enough to go, no, I care about these people around me. Get the fuck back inside. And when players can't do that, they make boneheaded mistakes. And and they need their teammates to walk up to them and be like, yo, you know better. You know better. You know, a coach shouldn't even have to address that. Your peer. So those moments when ego trumps unity. It's true. I, yes. think, so. I think moments. We like have that, a name for it in the NFL. It's called Aaron Ross. Well, it's called like. Offensive and defensive linemen. They do it all the time. Yes, they do. They do it all the they time. Always, and they always you know? catch the guy that right. retaliates. It's never the guy right. who started. Right. Right. It's always. It's like, you yeah. held me down on the ground, yeah. so I get up and I and rock you. you rock you. And then, yeah, now yeah. I'm ejected. 15 yeah. yard penalty. And it's over. Yeah, it's it's timeless. It yeah. is. And because it happens all the time. Is that like, I feel like those moments on a different sort of scale, like on a life scale, are probably like the times in our society where there was some sort of down. When, when somebody allowed their ego to trump, you know, the greater good as a politician. I can, I can write a book on this with Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> okay. Um, but the bottom line is. more Republicans right now. They're, no, yeah, but no, they've both done it. It's not. The thing is, they're supposed to be. I know. Politicians are politicians. They're positive but politicians. Come on, like, some do it to your I'm face. Sorry. Some shake your hand. Do it I'm sorry. The red side right now. No, that look at it. Um, you're not wrong. Republicans. You're not are wrong. Right now. You're not wrong. Okay, but the bottom line is they both do it. It's just a you know, and again, and, and depend, again, obviously it's different things. But they've both done you're it in right. my lifetime. I'm not going right. to sit it's here. It's just Republicans it's just, right no. now are egregious with shit. We need to stop. I'm not going to turn this into political rant, but just real quick, we we, we, we haven't gotten stop. into politics in a long we time. We need to stop. We, if you ever, if you really want things to change in this country, we need to stop looking at each other as red and blue. You stop being Democrats, stop being Republicans, and start being fucking Americans. Right, okay, but RJ, because but, the I know it's a broad brush, Tom. But no, the bottom line no, that's is that's not a broad brush. The bottom line, no, because it is. The bottom line is we. If you, I, I've done this experiment many times. The, the funny thing about Democrats and Republicans, even independents, they agree on like eight or ten things. Okay, and it's these two things they use to divide you. Yeah, and but, every fight, it's like stop it. But, but here's my thing: it's like. It's almost like on on all these issues, there's like right and there's wrong. Yes. And it always seems like the Republicans are on the side that's like morally wrong. Right now they are because the guy that, that has the ticket is the most immoral, irrational fucking human being. And they're behind him. Because they're afraid of him. But like. Which is ridiculous. But at some point you got to um, grow up. You got to be an adult and realize like. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. It's like I agree. It's it's I don't okay. get it, and that's why I know what you're saying. Like we need people from both sides to come together. You we got to start. Like, stop dividing. And, it's supposed to be the United States, not the divided say, there's states. There's people on both sides that divide, but it's yeah, like every four if years. you're about hating people for their race, for their sexual orientation, for their religion, for their socioeconomic class, if you're about all that, well, that's just fundamentally morally wrong. 
That's, but, that's, but that's, got, like, that's not even political. That's that, just you have something. You have something's wrong with you. You were raised. Wrong. But it feels got, like the Republican Party is standing in those beliefs, right? Now. Because their leader, okay, you got to get him well, out. They got to get him out. And for whatever reason, they're afraid of this guy. And look, well, I know what it is. But there's also a bunch he's of people got, that actually he's support. Got, he's got deep pockets. And he's got a lot of friends who got deep pockets. And I keep telling people. He who has the gold makes the rules. True power rests behind the throne. And Donald Trump, Donald Trump wasn't the establishment. He was just part of the trust fund brigade that funded it. Okay? And that's true, because I have pictures of him and Hillary Clinton kissing and hugging us. Well, he was, like he was one friends. of the people that benefited from the establishment. Of course establishment. he is. Of course he that is. Benefited so when most. people say, he's not the establishment, I'm like, are you fucking he's kidding me? He's a product of he's, it. He's, his, his fucking, his, his uh, group, his circles are the ones that fund it. So stop it so they and, can get their and, tax cuts and, and all that other shit. Take from. Yeah, and take from it because that's how you get, that's how you win elections. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure Donald gets a tax cut because he's going to throw fucking five million in my campaign. Okay? And he's not the only one like that. Okay? The bottom and, line and, is he's just the one that actually got the presidency. No, and okay. the truth is, normal people have way more in common in terms of the problems they have on a day to day basis, you know, than what is being told to, you know? And there's so much miseducation and i feel like a lot of the miseducation is on the republican side and i know that seems biased and it is biased there are very wealthy democrats in the hey listen i know there are very good right that have not dude, that have not pushed that through for this education for them to be taught the right all of history not just the part no, you're, right, you're right democrats right. are just as guilty of that as you're republicans right, you're right. so you can't say that but my <laughs> point is it just seems like the republicans are always on that side it does lately like, come does on, on y'all. Like, but it goes we can't sit parts. here and go, hey, we got good, you know, we got, you know, people messing it up on both sides. Of course that's true. But right yeah. now, my God. The majority is on that side. I'm Republics. not arguing that. Stop. You, at some point, you got to realize that man is just bad. <laughs> He's bad for you. And He's bad he for the human race. Like, he just. He's bad for the human race on so many levels. And it's not even about, look, if you, if a, if a, if a Republican comes up that makes sense, get him in there. You know what I mean? It's going to do things the right way and not my way or not the way of the wealthy and make sure that then get them in there. Okay? You got to do and, what's right for people. You got to do the morally right thing. And it's like watching, it's like with the NFL with this stupid player code of conduct shit. Rip that fucking thing up. If I hear one more person say amend, amend? You don't amend something that's that much of a mess already. You rip the fucking thing up and start over. You start over. Okay? Page one. Are you Morals. saying we should rip up our constitution? No, the great thing about our Constitution is that it can always be changed. That's the way they left it. And that was smart. They knew they were going to make mistakes, but they left themselves a way to correct them. You don't got to rip it up. You have to do... You can change. We can change. There's they, too much that we haven't changed. And why is that? Okay? Think about who... If you... This is, listen, if you... Because Republicans are on some bullshit. Hey, look, Democrats are on that and same 35-year career path, and, the seven-figure pensions. And Democrats they both do. don't push forward. I haven't They're not seen, aggressive. I haven't seen They're one, not productive. I haven't seen so one... So I'll say that about Dems. I haven't seen one Democrat or one Republican, not one, not one on their ballot, put term limits on them. Why? I'm sure people have. No, they haven't. I've never seen one. And, no, and by the way, no one I've ever known that has voted has come home and told me. Okay, because I ask, hey, let me know when you see that. Never. And you know what? You're not going to see it. I've heard people talk about Tony Nance. Talking about it is one thing. Having somebody run with that on their ballot is quite enough. I think I, think I heard Barack talk about Tony Nance. And maybe yeah. Bernie. Uh, talking about it is one thing. Putting it on your ballot and running it with it is another. That's another. Because you're not going to see change until that happens. There are people that have been in there 35 years. They don't understand you. They don't understand me. The world has changed in that time. They got to make sure they keep getting theirs and yeah. screw the rest of the world. And that's politics, by the way, Democrat or Republican. And nobody has pushed for this on either side. So they're both guilty. And that, to me, is the most important thing because there's not <laughs> enough minorities in the White House, and you know this. There's not enough minorities in, on the floor that said there's not enough. There's not enough for change to actually happen. And because why? Because there's no term limits. Dude, I think, like, Georgia just got their first black congressperson this year 2022 that's true and that's i'm pretty sure when did this one was a civil they war had the, they had the they had the runoff the mm -hmm. runoff election mm -hmm. um let me see. democrats and republicans department of agriculture i guess this is what we're 1938 okay it's 2022 1938 that's 84 years ago boys and girls the department of agriculture Sent a letter to the to the to the White House saying that the topsoil in this country was no longer 
by 1950 now, by 1950, would be devoid of the nutrients our bodies needed to, to, to run an optimal milk, the 90 nutrients that we need. Our, the, our top soil was no longer going to be able to provide that for us. That was 1950 that actually happened. 72 years ago, they have done nothing about it. And when I say they, I mean Democrats and Republicans, because they've both been in there, they both know about it, they don't give a damn. Go look at the back of, a, of, a, of any, any food in your pantry. When you find corn syrup, which you'll find on half the shit at least, tell me what the hell that's doing in there. Because there's no need for it. Okay, This goes deeper than you can even deep, deep, deep. I think I, I, think I might have been wrong. You have all been wrong. I, I was wrong. I'm trying to think. I thought that I was wrong eight times today. Or that I count. Probably more than that. Anyway. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Who? Oh, the, the, uh, the guy who got the... That uh, one, yeah. Mm. Um. Anyway, it turned into a political rant, much to the, the joy of, of one... Tom Izzo. There it is. Uh, who is it? Raphael Warnock became the first African-American senator from Georgia on January 20th, 2021. So a year ago. That's insane. A year and a half ago. Especially when you think about yeah. the black population in Georgia. You're just, you're just feeding my heart. <laughs> you're just feeding. I don't know why you don't vote, RJ. But I can't imagine why. <laughs> so uh, You know I know. disagree with you on that bullshit. That's fine, but I ain't voting for the lesser of two years. That's how we got in this mess in the first place. That's how you got Donald and Hillary. <laughs> okay, because we Dude, kept voting for the lesser of two evils, much, and then plop, here they are. Break. <laughs> no. There's always a worse of the two evils, and he was the worse. That's right. The lesser of two evils. That's right. Thank you, Tom. Just said it for me. Okay, anyway. It's, but still, like, I'm going to vote for the lesser. I'm not going to vote at all. I don't okay, endorse. Great. I don't endorse. So now, so I don't now, endorse. So now we'll get the party. more evil one. Yeah, it was my fault. <laughs> it was my fault. No, when you think of all you're going to blame me on me. The one who's been calling for term limits. The one who's been calling for equal rights. The one who's been calling for better health care, lower it. lower taxes on the middle class. Calling for it by what? Not voting. I'm not voting for. I don't like Hillary either. Okay, she's not. She's oh, she's better than Donald Trump. Hell yeah. Well, how did Hillary lose? Because things weren't changing. Because so many people like you didn't vote. Things they weren't were like, you know changing. What? Lesser of two evils. There's still so many. We still and don't have. Trump we still don't have term limits. We still aren't taxing the rich right. enough. So we're so, and they're Democrats so, when Barack was it so, that didn't happen. So here's the thing. <laughs> so no term limits, which is doubled down on by the fact that Trump got to elect multiple judges to the Supreme Court, and now you really are going to. Why have, didn't when Democrats were in the House? Why didn't they change it? Well, we had, that's on Barack Democrats Obama. Too. Well, I'm saying it's both. This no, but, is, I keep telling no, but, you, this is no, some sick parlor no, game so, and you keep falling no, so for it. They're in it no, together. No. So, <laughs> so while Barack was in office, I Scal love when I Scalia, radical. Scalia radical. died and he tried to appoint a justice. The Republicans in Congress stonewalled it, wouldn't allow it to happen stonewalled. because they said, you only have a year left in your term. We're not going to allow you to appoint a judge. Okay, then in the last month of Trump's pres presidency, while he had already been voted out, he was able to appoint a justice. Donald Trump bullshit, and the de that's the Democrats' fault because yes, the it is. <laughs> the Republicans are ruthless and will do anything to help their cause. Of course they will, regardless of the better of the people. This, they the don't Democrats, care about the people. The Democrats they care need, about the one percent. The Democrats need to realize that they're on the side that actually cares about the people. So when they have a chance to cheat the Republicans or do something to beat the Republicans, they need to do it because they are on the side that is right. Yeah, but the problem is... So problem stop is, being little... In a two-party system... And do it. In a two-party system, they all have equal, equal... It's all set up to end at a time. And that's true, too. Which means nothing happens. And here we go again. But things and have blah, happened. Blah, 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 things blah. have happened. We've moved backwards. Roe v. Wade being overturned? We weren't moving to begin with. Right, but now we're backwards. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't say you keep... That's worse you than keep, standing still. You keep endorsing this system by voting for these people, and this is, eventually this is what happens. The dam breaks. And shit like this happens. Yeah, but opting and out is also... Meanwhile, meanwhile, the cost of living has gone up how much, but minimum wage never... There's no living wage... The oh, yeah, and that's all the, Biden's fault, right? No, no, it's not. It's the whole, it's all of them. They all know about it. 
They all know about it. But, Nothing's but been love, done. I love how I'm not blaming Biden. For I that. love how that, the Republicans that existed. That. that of course they're going to do Republican, that. Thanks, Biden. Wait, if gas prices if went Trump. up while Trump was in office, I wasn't going. Thanks, Look, Trump. Here's a fun fact for all you guys: America, the United States, rather, is the eleventh, the eleventh highest in the world. The other, there's ten other nations that have gone up more than the U.S. But Joe Biden is not president of those countries. Okay, so he had nothing to do with this. Right. So to say that is asinine to say. That. Sure. Okay, so I'm not blaming that. That's not Biden's fault. This was this was a problem before he even got there. Okay, the bottom line is he's been in he's been in, in, in 47 years. He knows what's been going on. He's been in there for 47 years before he became president. And he knows what's going on. This is why people didn't want to vote for him because well, nothing's changed in 47 years. He's been there. What the hell's he been doing? And you know what? That's a valid argument. <laughs> so the bottom line is this is the problem, and that's what they want you to do. By the way, what they want you to do, and you're both doing it. I'm not going to sit here and laugh at you and listen to your crap every four years. Okay? Anyway, we've gone on way too much with this. We have. Aaron Rodgers sucks, and I hate him. Anyway. Um, Dude, we went from Aaron Rodgers to Republicans and Democrats. You, you know, you, you love this guy. This is your moment. When you get to shine. Okay? But anyway, uh, we're going to close on that. Dude, if all you do is talk about sports, you, you can't Honest. distinguish yourself from anyone. I'm serious. I'm not saying we shouldn't. We need to be versatile. I'm saying I'm. Sa- Did because, we just spend ten minutes on this? Right, right. but then out of nowhere, right. wasn't planned. No, <laughs> but that's what's going to set us apart. Because somebody wants an opinion on fucking, you know, a random, a, a, a very relevant sports topic, you're gonna go to ESPN. But ESPN. if somebody wants to hear some thoughtful shit, I haven't heard one person on ESPN call it Aaron Rodgers for this shit. Give me a break. Not one. Yes. Not who? I have. Give me a name. Oh, stop it. You said you saw one. If I it was have. one, you should definitely know who it is. They have been talking about Aaron Rodgers. Who Rogers criticized him for this today? Oh, I, I'm not watching this game. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I'll be, to be fair, I'll give you till noon tomorrow. You know why? Because everybody's had a chance to freaking digest this crap he said. Mm-hmm. And we'll see if get up, first take, Shannon Sharp. What's that one? The, the, what do they call those two? Uh, first things. No, no. Uh, what do they call that one? First two. Undisputed. Undisputed with Shannon Sharp and, and, and Skip there on the other channel. Whoever, NFL Network, I invite you all. I want to know who's the first person who's going to go, really, Mr. Rogers? Really? Have you been hanging out with Kevin Durant? Really? Okay. The, the organization does everything you want, and then what doesn't turn out the way you want it, now you're going to point a finger? Wow. Stop me where I haven't heard this before. <laughs> okay. And this is why the inmates can't run the asylum. <laughs> okay. Because then it's all about them and not about the team. <sighs> oh my god! Now you want to get politically correct. <laughs> I'm usually always politically correct. Have I not been tonight? I'm just happy that you're back. <laughs> I just miss my friend. <laughs> okay, Morgan my, Freeman. My friend, Tommy. <laughs> so anyway, I guess I just miss Morgan. Freeman. Miss my friend. <laughs> okay. I'm not yeah. Frank Caliendo neither. You just try me. He can he can do that. I can't do that. He can do Morgan Freeman. Really yeah, I yet. can't do that. I can't. Well, I love Morgan. I love you. Oh, I just can't. Awesome. I can't in person. I can't. And, so and, and impression is it's the sincerest form of flattery. And I wish I could do a good more. I can't do a good more. There are guys, there are ones that I can imitate. Like, you know, I can do the boss thing with Matt Damon. I can do that one pretty good. You know, but I'm from there. That doesn't really count. <laughs> so anyway, you guys have a great night. We're gonna you know we'll be back tomorrow night for wet my whistle Wednesday. Okay. So, and by the way, the Mets will be playing. This is going to, I want to see this is going to be interesting tomorrow night. Okay. So we are sure it's Scherzer, right? Yeah. It's Scherzer. Okay. Maybe we should, oh, you know, the Mets will be on. We go on at nine. They'll still be playing. Right. So okay. maybe I'll put the game on up there. No sound. Okay. Um, and like, as we talk, we could give some comments on the game. We, could we can do that. Topics. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Um, I'm, I'm getting for that. It's a big game. It's a big yeah. series. I have no problem with I'd rather have that game on the freaking shit socks and the pirates. I mean, or the other thing we could do <laughs> I mean, is instead of recording, we could go live. Name it, name it, you know, Mets Braves 817. Mm-hmm. Play by play. Play by play from the sack. And you and I can watch the game and tell we who can, knows. You know, maybe somebody will join the live. We can do anything. You know, maybe somebody we're, looking to stream the game. We're versatile. We'll find our live. We can, we'll figure that out. We'll have to, we, we have to prep for this. Early, I'm just saying, uh, get together earlier. Yeah, so. yeah we got to make sure we set this up. So, it's, well, I'm uh, taking the girls to gymnastics. I got to take Anthony to Taekwondo. We're, we're still recording. 
What time? Uh, probably seven thirty. Around there. Okay. Yeah, there. We have to get yeah and I'll be back seven fifteen. Yeah, we can do that. We can make sure we set so up. Maybe we get stream. together around eight fifteen. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine. Put the game on. So, we do a live. I got news for you. If there's one thing you want to see, it's play by play from these two. <laughs> God forbid, the God, Mets, forbid. God forbid the Mets aren't doing oh, well. Oh, geez. Lord, this could be ugly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to move all the sharp tools and everything out of the shed. Everything, hide everything, put, put it away, lock no, it up. going to have a good day tomorrow. So, anyway, you guys have a great night tomorrow. Midweek. We're midweek. Wet my whistle Wednesday. We're halfway home. Hump, hump day, hump day, hump day. Okay? So, no pun intended. Anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. Uh, Mets, Mets, Braves, game three of the Donnie down there in Atlanta. That should be a lot of fun. More football talk, and we're going to go live, and we'll just play-by-play for you as well, okay? You guys have a great night. We will see you tomorrow in the p.m.